Greetings, greetings, everyone. I am your hostess, Nita Beksu. I am doing a Sunday Solar Seminar. And this day, it's been quite a while since I've done it. But today is symbolic to me because it is the day after a profound ritual sacrifice, a ritual um, march. Uh, war march that has taken place in the metro uh, Kansas City, Missouri area and across the country, known as St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is a tradition in the United States. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a background or detail about it, but my focus is on breaking the ghost spell of the St. Patrick uh, ritual. We are completely unaware or oblivious of the reality that we have, we have been cast under a spell as melanated people, as indigo people across the planet. And this continues in our um, absence of knowledge of self and um, our way of life, which has traditionally been a way where we have been uh, able to live in harmony with creation, live in harmony with all living things, but there are living things that are not trying to live in harmony with us and would seek our genocide, our complete uh, uh, oblivion. Uh, obli uh, obliteration is a better word. So with that being said, I would like to share with you a article that I had written way back in 2012. I discovered some profound information and it might have been earlier than that, uh, but I had this vision of seeking the history of Bess. In my um, studies with ASCAT, the Association for the Study of Classical African Civilization, I realized that I came to the understanding and knowledge that we are, as melanin people, the oldest people on the planet, that we carry a strong um, heritage of civilization, the, the spreading of civilization across, across the globe, across the entire planet. And the ideas that I have been lied to and many of our people have been lied to in the knowledge that, oh, we're just a slave class, we, we're, there's nothing that we have offered or contributed to the world and that our lot in life is to work and to be uh, an assistant and an enabler of the Caucasian race. First of all, I object to the idea of race because race is a political construct. It's a social engineering uh, objective. It only occurred uh, profoundly in the early 1600s, 1700s. Uh, in the Americas. So the ideas of this always being the way things are, we haven't been on the planet long enough and our people have not been in this state long enough for that to be, to prevail. Um, but my objective is to share the information that I know about the classical African civilizations, the oldest known people are the Trois Khoisan. The Trois Khoisan can be found in Central Africa today, right now. They are the oldest people on the planet. Uh, later on, we evolved or moved, I wouldn't say evolved physically, but evolved in understanding and association with the gathering of knowledge and information on the planet to a state of, um, from hunter-gatherer, 
uh, gather a hunter as I prefer it, uh, where we followed the herds of antelope and uh, wildlife across the planet and learned and the, that nature was our teacher to the Nubian pastoral peoples who are the shepherd kings who are the people who then uh, began to start a uh, more sedentary but uh, transformative in that they were nomadic people but they traveled in herds uh, herds of an uh, herding animals and they were known as the shepherd kings goats and, and um, cattle of different kinds um, across the planet uh, pred predominantly in Africa and the east um, lands um, Arabia um, as we know it, Turkey, places of this nature across the planet. Trading, establishing trading routes uh, that followed the seasons, followed the way of the animals that, you know, when they were pregnant, when they were having ch children, um, that process was a part of the season of their, their travel and their work and their lifestyle so the shepherd kings moved i'm going to get away from evolve they moved to another understanding of a more sedentary way and so this was the agricultural um, um queendoms or kingdoms uh that were dynasties families known societies uh city states that grew and mass because of their sedentary weight, uh, because of the change of their diet from more um, from wild wild uh, findings of grains and to grains and to more cereal based uh, foods that uh, enabled them to remain in one place, uh, be, uh, uh, to grow, to to have children in abundance because they were sedentary and to be protected um, by, in this sedentary way or fashion because of the growth of the population. So those three time periods of the hunter-gatherer, the Nubian pastoral, and the Kemetic agrarian cultures. Now, I say Kemetic, but most people think of Egypt. Uh, Egypt is the latest time period a very brief maybe at the most a thousand years that the term Egypt was actually used uh, but predominantly that was Kemet. Kemet also is a reflection of the hunter-gatherers so that time frame of eons and I would go so far as to say at least 250 thousand if not more um, uh, in the millions of eons of time I know that the ancient Kemetics were able to pass on from generation to generation at least um, four ages an age is uh, 25,000 years and so that is quite a lot of time frame and then that studying the stars studying the movement of the universe they were able to amass at least four of those 25,000 year increments now you break the 25,000 year increments into 22,500 uh, era time periods um, the planet uh, our planet wobbles around the sun not just you know it doesn't spin it wobbles in a in a way where we have a different frame of vision as the seasons go by but without going into any any other greater detail than this i wanted to read to you um a uh story that that i have an essay essentially that i have created 
uh, that reflects our way of life. Um, I've written two articles under the Amin Par Ankh blog spot. Um, Amin Par Ankh is our uh, ancient Kemetic spiritual system. Um, and this is our practice in our way of life. Um, Amen means that which is sacred. Par means the house or the covering or the um, temple. Our bodies are temples, holy spiritual temples. And they have hidden knowledge that is just to be expressed. Amen, par, and then ankh is living or life or eternity of existence. And so Amen Par Ankh is the name of our sacred society here in the heartbeat of uh, um, the Americas. I distinguish the US from America. Usually you, uh, the official title is the United States of America. America is the innocent land that was invaded where our Aboriginal people existed. The United States is the invader of this innocent land. So I do not crucify and use the political term of America to condemn what has happened to our people because we are indigenous also to the Americas. So I do not condemn or use the term, you know, America is going to fall or, you know, I don't send that energy out. I condemn the United States that is the occupier at this present time, uh, the invader of America, that people who are citizens of the United States are not Americans. Americans are the indigenous people or the people who, have, who are a part of this planet and those families who have, who live among us. And I, myself and my family background, my history of my ancestors, it ties us to the Americas. My, uh, on my father's side, we were Choctaw. And on my mother's side, we were Natchez and Tutsi on her father's side. And I am happy to know my people, who my people are. And I celebrate my life according to that. The Tutsis, of course, to this day, speak uh, Swahili and Kemetic language. And that is the language parallel that was found in the Americas. Among other, like Hebrew, there are other cu cultural languages in the Americas that were also, that run parallel in their um, and the way that they speak and, and the uh, translations to ancient East African languages. So with that being said, we are the oldest people on the planet. The Twa Khoisan people were known as Bess. And Bess is the um, symbol, the universal symbol all over the planet. And so I will read you an essay that will share that information. All right, so at this time I'm going to share the screen. And here we are with um, our Amen Par Ankh page, healers are spiritual warriors who have fought, the, found the courage to defeat the darkness of their souls, awakening and rising from the depths of their deepest fears like a phoenix rising from the ashes, reborn with the wisdom and strength that creates a light that shines bright enough to help encourage and inspire others out of their own darkness. Amen Par Ankh is a sacred temple of life. We grow food to restore balance in our relationship with the cosmos, earth, and our natural communities by increasing awareness of life, health, and environment. 
We are a mafia, a healthy place to live. Amanak Urban Farms mission is to produce, promote, and perpetuate food, resources, and comfort, and to grow local, healthy, indigenous foods in environmentally respected, earth gentle ways. And of course, we have our number here that you can call to, co to connect and learn more about our work. So now we're going to read. Um, this was written back in February of 2012. The Ancient Origins of Leprechauns. Bess the Black Twa Man. Black Le Per Ra Khan, or Khans, Geb and Bess, and the presence of Geb and Bess all over the world. So when you break Leprechaun down to syllables, you can find the ancient languages because the Twa Khoisan speak in a mono, um, mono words or single words, single syllables, monosyllabic. So if you break any word down, you'll find that origin um, of and that it, it becomes universal because they use sound as sonar, as a, on a higher level of communication. They were uh, telepathic. They were able to uh, throw their voice and use the sound vibration for healing, for um, um, telepathy, for other kinds of extrasensory capacities. And that is what made them golden people, people of, of the ka ra sa ta or Christ mind. So, so I have broken down leprechaun to Li, Her, and Ra, or Re, and Ka, and then Khans. So as we advance to the new year and the new seasons of spring, let us not forget our ancient ancestors. The vernal equinox in March is where the days are just as long as the nights. Rains in the spring. Many celebrate Carnival or Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday, before the spring fasting of Lent. And these are all symbolic and parallel activities for ancient ancestral agricultural references of our ancient agrarian societies to pay propitiation as a request for an abundant growing season and harvest. Easter, or the East Star, in the West is celebrated on the first Sunday following the full moon after the vernal equinox around March the 20th through the 22nd. And of course, this month it will be on Tuesday coming up. We still pay homage to and acknowledge Bess, the Leper Rakan, the original black mod guy, people of the forest. They are the ancient original inhabitants still living in Europe. They are the Twa Khoisan, pygmies in some references, people who traveled to the four corners of the earth and established their civilizations throughout Europe and the Americas. Their icon can be seen all over the planet. And so now here you see a picture of this all over the planet. Here he is in the Mayan calendar. This is the center is Bess sticking his tongue out. This is an icon of Bess and East Africa. The same symbol, the same references. You find Bess in England, you have uh, Germany, you have seen, you'll find symbols of Bess in China in Thailand, in 
India, you have symbols of Bess all over the planet. And so I'm going to proceed in that the Twa Pygmies, who dwelled in what is known as Ireland, were the original inhabitants and the source of the Leprechaun legend. So when you celebrate St. Patrick's Day, that's the celebration of their genocide, our ancestors. Here is a picture of your St. Patrick's, the real meaning of St. Patrick's Day. It's a war march. In Kansas City, they, the theme for this year's march was the pipes are calling. This is an emboldened spell. And I would, I would bet that here recently we will find piece of people of melanin missing in the Kansas City and nationally. People just disappearing off the off of uh the land and they will be found murdered in a ritual sacrifice because this is the time when they kill our people and sacrifice for the spring. They have their own pagan way of paying perpetuation to keep maintain their power and to maintain their um, existence on the planet and keep us in subordination to them. So they will sacrifice our people. So let's go back to the story. We pay homage to and acknowledge best the Leprechaun, the original Black Magi, the icon can be seen all over the planet. Bess is the true leprechaun. Bess is the spirit of spring, the equinox, and the east star. Bess is the ancient African Twa Khoisan leader who spread the way of African civilization, sharing the laws of the natural kingdom and the universe. Later, European Catholics and Irish venerate the mass murder of murderer Saint Patrick, who ironically wears the regalia of the ancient Kemet East African societies in the dress of Batak and Usara, as Old Pat drives out the Uraeus snake hat or snake haired people of Ireland. Saint Patrick and his affiliations usurped the spiritual symbols and culture of the ancient East Africans and Southern Africans because the presence of um, the presence of the Twa prevailed all over the, the planet and but all over Africa. So again here is your St. Patrick's Day and so we'll continue the Black Melon peoples are the first to inhabit the planet. They have lived and established civilizations and kingdoms all over the planet for eons. Their lifestyle of coexisting in harmony with creation, with the natural life on the planet, are reflected in the characters of elves, dwarves, leprechauns, trolls, and fairy stories. I also have a blog called Amen Par Ankh Best. Basil is best and their spiritual metaphysical properties. So as for old St. Patrick's, who was he really? Why would this man be canonized or declared to be a saint? Just because he supposedly got rid of all the snakes in Ireland. Well, here's another version. Indigo melanated people are the original snake headed people of Ireland. We are the ones who were driven off and or slaughtered in the name of a Catholic saint named Patrick, who ironically wore the symbols of Pata and Usada. Our black ancestors of the East knew about the powers of all of the indigenous herbs, roots, plants, like clover and thistle. We are the first mound builders and healers all over the planet. 
And this shines a new reference on the first real Europeans. The Trois Khoisan are known as pygmy or small people who have a history of predating the Greco-Roman Judeo timeline history of Adam and Eve by more than 200,000 years. The ancient Twa people were nomadic. They journeyed and migrated all continents and islands over the planet, spreading to Northern Ireland, Germany, and the rest of Europe and the Asian continent and had settled in these Western lands prior to any of the influences of the Roman or latter Roman Catholic Church, that they had a cultural, technological, and philosophical impact and influenced the establishment of societies known as pagans or Druids. One of the cultural influences of the Druids Twa had what was the fact that they were known for their headdress and their hair, who many grew into locks as I wear myself, that looked like snakes or worms. Much later, the Haru lock worn to one side of the temple was represented in the fez or head covering that also depicted the Kemet symbols known as a Uraeus or cobra raised strike, which is the same snake image you see worn as a menez by the queen and king of ancient Kemet or ancient Nubia Kandakita. And I say the Kandakita because instead of a queen, I, I use the term Kandaki. Instead of saying dome or land, I call it ta or place or uh, body or existence. The snake symbol also represents the Kundalini awakening vortex found in the chakra energies traveling up our spines and the helix of our DNA. And so I'm going to move past and show you another quick photograph of the Uraeus or serpent crown shown on Egyptians and Nubian royalty, also known as the Nagar or the Negos. Now, no. Negro and nigger are not, or nega are not, are the feigned use. And it's not meant for any upliftment. It is a co-opting of the hatred, uh, is a way of desensitizing from the hatred. I can understand why our children have used this term. Uh, it does reflect a certain level of self-hatred, but it's more of the idea that um, they are desensitizing from that hate. If someone hurts you and you desensitize yourself, you don't feel it anymore, or, or you let it roll off of you, or you can ignore it. It is a defense mechanism. But the term nigger is nothing compared to negu or the nagar or negus that was enunciated by our ancient civilizations. It is not the same parallel. Um, among many indigenous African cultures, the Uraeus is a symbol of wisdom, power, and protection. And so here you see a picture of Usara being nurtured by Ma'at, supported by the energy and principles, uh, principal power, she is a principal power, or a coup. Uh, Usara is also a principal power of all things green and growing life. Um, he is the master over the underworld, and um, he is the resurrector of life and existence. Here is an example, as I read, of the ancient Kemetic prince with a side lock. This picture was depicted in uh, 1064 BC, only a thousand years before uh, uh, the Common Era. And then here is a picture of, uh, in 1987, of a Nile Valley Sudanese child 
wearing almost the identical reference of a sidewalk. Here is an, another example of a sidewalk of a moor type hat that is worn by a, a, what appears to be a guard and he wears the uh, sidelock or the um, the brush of of um, uh, and a black that is streaming from his crown. There was an African Gorman who ruled Ireland at the time of the Anglo-Saxons. There were also blacks among the Vikings. The first king to unite Norway was melanated or black. And he was known as Halfdan the Black. Here's another picture of Bess uh, playing a harp. He is the consummate supporter of children and family. He is present with us as children are born and a guardian of the family and the keeper of the family, the nurturer. He, he is the one who um, is depicted as a butler or support network, the nanny. He is that energy. He or she is that energy because the Twa people, of course, were uh, initially matriarchal. And of course, here's another image of the leprechaun. He is the king. He wears his green crown with his golden buckle and his natural organic clover um, leaf. And his beard and his pipe are all symbolic. Here's another depiction again of Bess in China, Bess in uh, Thailand, but it's almost identical uh, images all over the planet. And this is a picture of uh, Newt, the sky goddess. Uh, she swallows the sun in, in the uh, west in the evening at sunset and she digests and then it moves into her womb where she gives birth to the sun in the morning. And the sun is depicted as Usara in the morning and white. And the noonday sun is yellow. And at night or sunset, Haru. So you have Usara, Ra, and Haru. Haru turns beet red in a blink right before the sun sets completely. And he is, that is his first strike on Set, his uncle. He draws blood at sunset or the strike of Set. This is a depiction of Gib. Uh, Geb is also known as the earth, and he, above his head, has a goose. He is, or she is, the goose laying the golden egg. All right, so let's go back and continue our reading. I'm going to read through this. Here is a Menez headdress. Here is St. Patrick depicted as... Um, and wearing what looks to be an African uh, dress uh, of Pata. Here is a depiction of the pop of Pata. And so we have these parallel universes of information. Here is Aset and Usara's, uh, or um, the feather is, is Ma'at. Here's another depiction of a young man wearing a side lock of hair in East Africa. So going back, I want to read a little bit about Geb and Bess, the ancient origins of leprechauns. Uh, Bess is 
the magi or magic. He loves gold and can draw wealth and property to the home. You can find his, this symbolic image of this all over the planet. Black people have arrived and have lived all over the planet. Their lives in the North are often reflected in the titles of elves and, dwell, and dwarfs. A leprechaun are the caricatures of Gab and Bess. Leprechauns are the dwarves, elves, or fairies who occupy the realm which lies somewhere between the physical and the spirit world. The word leprechaun can be taken from several sources, breaking down the syllables and removing the vowels so that you can reveal the earliest Trois-Nubian Kemetic origins. Li per ra khan or Li is Leo, lion, or king. Per means house or temple. Re or Ra is the sun or Leo or the lion. Ra. And Ka is an attendant spirit or your spirit supposedly dwelling as a vital life force in a person or image or um, substance. The spiritual part of an individual believed by the ancient Egyptians to survive the body after death. Khan is a title for a sovereign or military ruler or chief. The Irish Gaelic define leprechaun or half body, referring to their partial occupation of the physical world, and leith, or blorgum, which means leather smith, or shoemaker. A leprechaun is described as a small man, less than 24 inches in height, with thick, hairy, or myrrh, or red hair, that is mostly hidden under a three-cornered hat, or a top hat or other covering of the head. He has pointed ears, large bushy sideburns, or a full curly beard, sparkling green eyes with rosy cheeks and a broad nose. His clothes are mostly green, but might include a leather work apron. All leprechauns wear shiny black leather shoes with silver buckles as they are excellent cobblers and have a reputation and trade in which they take great pride. It is said that they make shoes for many spirits in the fairy world. Fairies don't follow the same rules as humankind. The leprechaun is said to love his pipe. He drinks and has, enjoys his solitude, but on occasion he can become social and when this happens, he loves to dance and engage in uh, antics. In popular Irish folktale, leprechauns and other mythological figures were associated with the country's numerous prehistoric burial sites. They live in the natural realm, the forest and the caves. They know the herbs and the minerals and throughout legend surrounding the leprechaun, the image of a mischievous, shrewd, and quick-witted Bess emerges. They are the magi, or the magicians, and shaman of the community. It is said that when the dames plundered Ireland, they left their gold with him. So, this is a continuation of our, our message of today, which is the ritual sacrifice of the Leprechaun, of the Tua Khoisan people. And it's not just a story, it really happened. It really, there, it's still happening. There is still mass murder of African melanated uh, uh, original people. 
the Twa Khoisan of Kaolan are the oldest people on the planet. They were the first people to migrate to all of the continents, including Australia, Europe, Asia, and the Americas, as well as islands of the planet. Later over time, the Moors ignored the warning signs of their ancestors to stay away from these Yoruku, mixed up with the calcified consciousness of Arab a Aryan ideas and belief systems, they felt compelled to have pity on the Caucasoid self-imposed light, brought, which brought them aid and released these cave beasts from best spell on the flat earth. So what we're saying is that Bess was the Magi. Bess was the earliest people on in the European northern region and they once they discovered the Aryan or Caucasian they put a spell on them to keep them contained to keep them in the concept of a flat earth that they could not go beyond the barriers of the cold and the, or they would die but it was a trick to keep them contained and they lived among themselves and they were on the path of dying of plague of their own filth in their own uh, uh, lack of knowledge of self and lack of hygiene and lack of uh, way uh, or knowledge or civilization they were dying out and the moors over time came to discover them ignored warning signs from their ancestors to stay away from these Yoruba, mixed up with the calcified consciousness of Arab uh, Aryan ideas and belief systems they felt compelled to have pity on the Caucasoid self-imposed plight brought them aid taught them how to wash taught them proper uh, hygiene how to bury how to create uh, sewage systems for their uh, waste and uh, uh, proper ways for them to give birth and survive uh, the, the child to survive they gave them aid and told them that the earth was not limited or flat that there was a whole another part of the planet and it was the Moors who were in the Nina Pinta Santa Maria. It was the sh they were the shipmen. They were the ones who taught Columbus about the New World and delivered him to an island and released him from the spell or the fear of the ignorance that there is more than one trade route. To get to it to India, but that he didn't need to go to India. He could create India and gather what he needed as far as resources and exploitation in the Americas. So why they felt compelled to pity the Caucasoid? They were dying off. They had a self-imposed plight, brought and they brought them aid, released these cave beats from Bess's spell of the flat earth. The spell was brought on by the best people, the Twa Khoisan. Now they have been running rampant on a terrorist reign for more than 2012 years. And they have reversed the spell and cast it on us and many of us are people who are in the matrix or in unaware, uh, oblivious, completely ignorant of the plight that they are under and why they are living in this kind of way. And um, this article was written to, to set us free, to give us a certain level of illumination. The Roman Catholic Church misinterpreted and demonized the practices of these early ancestors. As the Twa later transfer their knowledge to the Druids and pagans, they began to conceal and hide this knowledge while peacefully obtaining access to land and resources.
the Roman Catholics attempted to persecute and proselytize them to their religion. They would move or replace with Christianity the original beliefs, customs, and symbols, along with the leaders and healers of the Twa people who are still present in Northern Ireland at this time. Old Patrick was given a commission to set up Roman Catholic churches all over Northern Ireland and in the process convert or remove the Twa, the Druid influences. So Patrick killed in genocide countless numbers of Twa people in the name of their God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Dogma. They were extremist terrorists. So when you hear people tell you that uh, priest Patrick was made a saint because he removed the snakes, it's a northern region. It's cold most of the time. They don't have snakes. First of all, there's no snake population. It's not because of St. Patrick. It's just that snakes are cold-blooded animals. They need, they, you find them mostly in tropical regions and warmer climates. You don't find them in cold areas. So, so when you hear about the saints, the, Pat, the saint removed the snakes from Northern Ireland, it's really referring to the mass murder nightmare of the Uraeus or lock-headed people, uh, the Tra, du Druids, Moors that were mass murdered in an act of genocide and ethnic cleansing. So the leprechaun or the leprechaun represent the black queens, kings, and the people who were murdered all in the name of a land grab and the pirating of natural resources and our knowledge by Christian religion, Roman Catholic dogma, dogma and proselytizing. So as you can see, there's a young lady here who has her hair and beautiful locks, much like myself. This is considered snake hair. This is, they blasted Medusa as a defamation of character of the black women who wore their hair in this natural form. This is a spiral. My hair spirals and my hair spirals around the spiral and creates an energy for me. It helps me to become very sensitive. It helps me to connect with nature and the universe. It is my antenna and I wear it as my crown. Not all of the Twa people were removed from Europe. The SS Nazi invasion of Europe during World War II uncovered thousands of black indigenous Europeans. Many of those who were captured were forced to choose between incarceration or to submit to sterilization. And here are some resources, uh, links that I have uh, established on the blog. This is a continuation of my blog post, Amen Parank Bess, and Amen Parank Bess, Basil is Bess, as I had said earlier. Bess is a spiritual protector, promoter, healer of our home and family. She encourages fertility watches over the, and teaches parents and children in their growth and development. Bess holds all of the wisdom and knowledge of the earth. She knows the cycles of time and the seasons. She knows the healing properties of all herbs. She is familiar with the garden, forest, animals, insects, lakes, rivers, mountains, and caves. She knows the prayers, the chants, the lyrics, the limericks, the lullabies, the bedtime stories, the dances, the mathematics the letters, formulas, recipes, and the words of power. 
He symbolizes the shaman healer of the gnome or clan. He is the chemist, the physicist, the doctor. She represents the sage, the guardian, the spiritual intuitive energy to ward off hostile energy from a family life, home, office, or wherever it is present. Bess controls the weather, the rain, the wind, the earthquakes, the volcanic eruptions. Bess is the wise man, the magi. He has the wisdom of the elemental and electromagnetic energy. He loves gold and can draw wealth and prosperity to the home. And you can find the symbolic images of Bess all over the world. The earliest images of elves, trolls, leprechauns, fairies, and gnomes from all over the world were indigo melanated black people. The people are all characteristic and symbolic of our ancient ancestors, the Twa Khoisan, also known as Pygmy, mother and father, with their history and wisdom of nature and the universe. Geb is usually represented in the form of man who wears either the white crown, to which is added the atef crown, or a goose. The goose has his sacred animal symbol. And as the god of earth, the earth personified the form of his body and was called the house of Geb or per -Geb. Just as the air was called the house of Shu, a her Shu, and the heavens the house of Ra, her Ra. Hence, he was also often portrayed laying on his side on the earth and was sometimes even painted green with plants springing from his body. So the giant and the um, story of. Um, the uh, Jolly Green Giant, who who had a, um, a young man sold his mo mother's last money for beans, Jack and the Bean Sprout. This is the story of Geb and the story of the goose that lays the golden egg. That is the origin of that story. Earthquakes were considered to be uh, or believed to be the laughter of Geb. Geb is also symbolic of Mother Goose, the goose that laid the golden egg, as portrayed in Jack and the Beanstalk tale, where the giant held the goose as a captive. Aside from cobbling, leprechauns are tied to the idea of luck, shamrocks, and four leaf clovers. One plant that is native to many places is clover, red and white clover are perennial herbs that grow wild throughout Europe, Asia, and the Americas, and were naturalized to grow in North America. So they were brought here and naturalized to be a part of America. It was thought that the clover, uh, having many, many medicinal properties, um, as it also very easily to find and harvest, uh, it also is a great detoxifier. Red clover species vary in size. They grow from 20 to 80 centimeters in height and have several stems from one root. The flowers are white, dark pink, or reddish purple. Magically speaking, clover is typically seen as a symbol of fortune and good luck. In some countries, it is used to ward off evil spirits and to help a seer develop their psychic abilities. The faithful will hang a bundle over their door to keep negative entities away or plant it in their front yards around the edges of their property. It was thought that um, clover was going to be eaten by livestock and, and there would be a free range of animals to consume it so that uh, it would always be cut down and be a low growing crop of instead of grass. Uh, red clover is a source of many nutrients including calcium, chromium, magnesium, niacin, phosphorus, potassium, thiamine, vitamin C. 
and rich sources of isoflavonoids. Um, I'm going to move past, I don't know um, of our time, uh, where we are. Uh, let me see. Um, trying to see how I can reverse this, but uh, I don't see where uh, the time frame is. But I want to move forward in that I have some other resources, Africa, africaresource.com, African Roots of Ireland, there's an article, and raceandhistory.com, there is an article. I don't know, I think that these articles were appeared later as I found them, I added them on to the website. But I found these 14th century Strasbourg Black Amours defending the German court. So they were called Black Amours. Uh, this is a tapestry of the history um, depicting a cent centuries defending from the, 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 the watchtowers um, and then the king and queen and the soldiers, archers, the lookout. So here the soldiers and archers are, are running towards this horde of individuals who were of light complexion, Caucasian, uh, the wild men and the Moors is the name of the tapestry of which part is shown, uh, is typical of other 14th and 15th century allegorical pieces woven in South Germany. The armorials in the lower border are those of Zorin von Bluck or Zorn von Plobisium Bulak, or Bulak, or Zorn von uh, Plosium and Blumel, or Blumlein, which were all powerful Strasbourg families at the time. So, this is a depiction of an ancient society of melanated people who were present and then these wild men came to try and create an insurrection. Here's a painting uh, depicting or a copy of the tapestry and it shows more of a, of a landscape of the, of, you know, the background. Uh, looks like there's a princess you know, another person in the, in the castle. Um, and there's another archer and, uh, and with a bowing arrow shooting from the watchtowers. And then there's a moat and some other guards that were out uh, defending and protecting this, the people from these wild men. Here is another depiction that also is can, uh, uh, um, a depiction of the presence of melanated African or Africoid peoples in Europe, the presence of Africans in Europe. Here is a mulatto king. You see he's lighter in complexion and they're severed heads by these uh, Caucasian uh, individual soldiers were, they were bringing the severed heads uh, to the, feet, the foot of this king, this mulatto king. Peter I, 1068, 1104, the king of Aragon and Navarre, son of Sancho V by first wife Isabel, of Urge Joe. This was painted in 1524, but it's a story that was written, that was created or passed down from 1068 to 1104, the King of Aragon. Aragon. Um, so this is a, a very powerful information to me that depicts the presence of African people all over the planet. 
Um, but to me, the, the main objective is to not blindly look away, but to actually uh, recognize the fact that we, um, not so much that we are oppressed people, but that we are people who have broad and uh, intelligence and capacity. We have spread civilization, that we are a great people in and of ourselves. Uh, that we are connected to uh, the ancient uh, 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 civilizations, uh, that we are connected to Africa, that uh, pan-African ideas, that we are related. What, and when, when a black man suffers in Brazil, we suffer. Uh, when an when a African indigo person suffers in England, we suffer. The, we are one as a people based on the color of our skin. But that color ties us to ancient Africa. I consider myself a Pan-Africanist with my family roots, um, my immediate family roots in the Americas as free people. We were not enslaved and emancipated. We actually lived as free people in the Americas before Columbus. Um, this is another article, I, and uh, um, we'll close down, that talks about, uh, pre, it's, it's titled Prehistoric Times, Riddles of Prehistoric Times by James Anderson, uh, written in 1911. And it, uh, it's highlighted pictures uh, on this picture of the article. The Little Dark Welshman, the Scot, and black celts of the west of the Shannon River in Ireland, as well as the same kind of men in Brittany and Equity in France, the Guanches of the Canary Islands and the Berbers in Africa are all probably the remnants of this African race of people, the Trois Cuisson. The Iberians in the ancient times inhabited the western and southern part of Europe and the northern parts of Africa. In fact, all parts of reach from the Mediterranean Sea. The Basques in Spain and France and the little dark Welshmen. So they're depicting presence of African people uh, all the way back uh, in time, in the history of Europe. Uh, here's another area where the first inhabitants of southern Europe were uh, in northern Africa, Arabia, France, the British islands, were a race of small men who did not average in height more than about four feet, five inches and they were slight build with dark complexions. They were an African people. So they're talking about articles and witness way back in 1911 of the presence of African people in, the, in Europe. So this, is, this ends our article on Amun Ankh. We are post this up in Amen Ankh Academy. Uh, it is a, a very powerful message about the presence of African people and that we have to break the spell of, you know, not the flat earth, but the spell that paralyzes us and gets us to where we are in un, without power to galvanize ourselves and stand as one nation uh, uh, on our own economics. Um, for more information or lectures on this and many other special edutainment presentations, contact myself or the Green Griot Gathering uh, organization. My name is Nutabek Sue Adenike Amenra Moses Eel. Um, I have my number listed here 
816-839-7945. Or you can email me at amen hyphen com at live.com. I hope you've enjoyed our presentation. I just wanted to be able to have an audio of the presentation. A lot of us, uh, the phrase, if you want to hide something from black people, you put it in a book. Uh, but to be able to read and hear this information um, can be something that that is an, an awakening or benefit. Thank you for listening to this presentation for today. Feel free to call me, email me. I have, um, and check out our website of amen-parunk.com blogspot.com um, we have Amanok inspirational gifts where we share artistic expressions that I have created uh, I didn't want to put out all my pearls before swine so to speak but I did make some graphic posters I offer painting personal portrait painting um, I do personal handmade flags um, here's an example of my flag. That I'm finished doing the finishing touches for. We do handmade flags sewn by uh, a, an African priestess representing the red, black, and green. This you can have this dimension um, and order whatever size you want. Um, we will use this flag uh, tomorrow and, um, well, actually Tuesday and Wednesday, where we'll celebrate the equinox at Swope Park. So I want to invite you all to come and attend, if you're here in Missouri, uh, our um, equinox celebration. We'll do a libation. And seed blessings and pay our propitiation for an abundant harvest um our philosophy is to in order to feed yourself and free yourself you must feed yourself um but still feel free to check out our pixel art um or check our blog i'm also available on facebook under amanak academy or amen par Ankh, which is our sacred society and enjoy our you know artwork uh for instance marcus garvey the i've been able to use the pixel website because i can upload my photograph of the work and what pixel will do is they'll take your work and change it to different size art, wall art, prints, wood prints, metal prints, acrylic prints, posters, or you can use it for uh, that same logo for home de decor, you know, pillows, throw pillows, the vet covers of, of the image. And so you can have handbags with the image of Marcus Garvey, uh, the Black Star, Marcus Garvey, One God, One Aim, One Destiny. And that depiction can be on your handbags. Uh, you can have a shower curtain depicted in the a very large print of Marcus Garvey. Um, you know, blankets, um, yoga mats, a variety of different kinds of um, you know, of course, T-shirts can be uh, uh, depicted, and so you can order your own apparel. They even have they have men's uh, T-shirts, women's clothing, youth clothing, toddler clothing, and of course, the baby onesies are so cute. Um, to be able to have your uh, article uh, uh, printed out. And as you support our um, art, your this money goes as a proceed to Amon Ankh or Amon Ankh Academy to support our virtual homeschool initiative. Um, 
I know that there are a lot of people out uh, as far as creative artists out here in the world and it's wonderful. Um, but your donation, your contribution for Almond Arc Academy is a step forward in our initiative for nation building. I've been working as a um, teacher in the Kansas City area. I was not able to retire. I actually quit. I walked, I walked away and said, I'm going to put my energy directly into the community that I lived in. I live four blocks away and I started a farm. I tried to start initiation uh, initiatives where I didn't have to connect with the government, where we as a people could come and grow together and create something. And a lot of our young people, they, they took my ideas and I see them all over Kansas City. I have urban farmers, I have people who have taken their front yard and, and, and grown food, not lawns, um, childcare initiatives, um, doulas, um, individuals who are, have, have started their own uh, entrepreneurial pursuit in their own homes, started their own gardens in their own homes, homesteading. It's wonderful to see, but it does not support me. It does not enable me to survive. No, I don't have a pension. I don't have any other kind of monies coming because I've divested from the government. But, you know, still I rise. Uh, so your work contribution or sponsor or support is galvanizing. It will enable me to promote uh, the initiatives that, and my vision. Uh, not my vision, but the creator. The vision that I have for my grandson to be able to go instead of going to a corner store that is an invader, to actually be able to go to a corner store that is owned by a community uh, of, of families. We all connect and relate to one another. Uh, and actually move off the grid, basically move to a resource-based economy, a barter and trade system. So we would barter and trade within our own community of resources and, and, and effort. And then the external individuals, people who are not a part of our community or choose not to be a part of our community, would be the ones that would have a fair, we would uh, be able to make a fair exchange, but they would be the ones to share the uh, financial dollar system if they want to change, remain in the dollar system. Um, so I am initiating a bar and trade system where, you know, my work and others who receive my work, we can barter and trade for each other's advantages and services. So feel free to contact us. Uh, again, 816-839-7945. This is um, a pleasure to be able to share with you and um, promote what we are doing in um, the way of life. Um, Thanks for watching. I am Nutebek Sue signing out.